make a change in the next 90 days compared to the last 90 days. Whether it's picking up books to read or adopting new health disciplines, or improving your relationships with your family, whatever it may be, no matter how small, start doing different things within the same circumstances. Since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves, we can change what we attract. Another secret to success was revealed to me when he asked, What do you have at the moment, Mr. Owen? You've attracted it by the person you've become. The simple principle here, once understood, explains a lot. Sometimes it's challenging to transition to blaming oneself instead of placing responsibility on external factors. This transition was tough for me. He pointed out, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket, nothing in the bank, creditors calling, and you're behind on your promises. He explained that this has occurred because of the person I've become. When I asked how to change it, he said, very simple. If you change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you need to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. He advised, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself. Make these personal changes and everything will change for you. He shared the secret. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I understood this, I turned my life around. If you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you had known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim is a hard worker. If you had known me, you would have said, he's the guy who doesn't mind coming in a little early and staying a little late. Well, Jim runs a hard worker, you say? Well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket, nothing in the bank, and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on myself. I'm telling you, if you learn that simple little principle and start the process today, at the latest tomorrow, give yourself tonight to think it over, and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace, I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income, and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job, work hard on yourself and develop the skills, work hard on yourself and develop the graces, all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace, I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into chains, promotions, no problem becoming more valuable to the company. I'm telling you, no problem money, no problem economics, no problem future, no problem if you just go to work on the right thing. Don't try to change the seed, don't change the soil, don't change the sunshine, don't change the rain, don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities, and if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. So, success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you've developed, something you've become. You attract success. So, the key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of is by your own personal development. Then he added one more, which is so important and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So, it's very important what you become, because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So, this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me, it changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 31, and that was just the economic part of it. It took me six years, from age 25 to age 31. It was unbelievable. Mr. Shaw, over a five-year period before he died at age 49, taught me some extraordinarily simple things. He only went to the ninth grade in school, Never finished high school, never went to college, never went to university. So, he put his ideas and his experiences in very simple language, which I think for me, 
You know, a kid from the farms of Idaho. That simplicity was so important because if it would have been technical, I'd have missed it. If it would have been mystic, you know, I would have backed away. But it was just basic, familiar stuff that I hadn't thought of before, and he did start to remind me, and those ideas changed my life. Mr. Shaw was the one when I said, you know, this is all they pay, he said, you've been working six years, Mr. Owen. How come you're not doing better? And I said, this is all the company pays. He says, well, that's not true. I said, no, this is my paycheck. This is all the company pays. He said, no, this is all the company pays you. I thought, that's a new way to look at it, right? He said, doesn't the company pay two, three, four, five times this amount to other people? And I said, well, yes. He said, well then, this is not all the company pays. It's all they pay you. And if you qualified, wouldn't your income grow two, three, four, five times? I said, I suppose so. He said, we don't have to work on the company, we have to work on you. See, that was the beginning of what he called the phrase, personal development. I told him things cost too much, he said, no, you can't afford them. I thought, well, that's a new concept. I hadn't thought about that. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf so you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you've got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become. See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly. You can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Here's what he said to me that changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Sho taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both, a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time, ah, uh, working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now, he said, it's fun to get up in the morning, not just getting up to go to work to pay the rent, but to get up to go to work to make a fortune first, to make a living for your family second, to make a fortune. And then he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought, no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by 2, by 3, by 5, by 10, and then multiply it by 10 again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life changing in every manner that you can imagine, but very simple ABC concepts. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic, and those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life-changing. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, let me give you three steps to start life change that can change your life, your personality, your lifestyle. Everything can change. Here are the steps. Number one, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is to find out how to change your life. Really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Schaff taught me, the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schaff, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was right. I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So, if you get the ideas, you can change anything. 
To get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now, Schoff also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it, and if you repeat it, go over it. Sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, it takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, your dress, your personality, your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal, find out how things work. So, Schaff gave me this word for my life change. He said, study, great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance, make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Now, here's a qualifying phrase, and we'll have several of these qualifying phrases throughout the seminar. Here's the first one. You may not be able to do all you find out. I understand that. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. Say, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and then discover that you've lived only one-tenth of it and the other nine-tenths went down the drain. Not for lack of opportunity, but for lack of information. So, that's number one. Find out how things work. Now, here's the best human virtue for finding out. Curiosity. Make a note of curiosity. Curious. You might add a word to it that'll help. Childish curiosity. Kids do it. They want to know something bad enough. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through. They've got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue when you've got to know. Be like a child. Now, if you're curious, let me give you three ways to find out how to change anything, any life direction, any dimension. Here are three ways to find out how to change anything. Number one is to read. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They just read, 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 while. Become a good reader. Now, that's my opinion. Listen to the other lectures and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower, be a student. Okay? I say, really, for life change, you've got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences. But another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, the best speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, double up your personality? Did you know there's books on that? And people don't read them. How would you explain that? And they can read. Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it, and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work. By the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half a night reading, reading, reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But we've got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader. Now, you don't have to read half the night, okay? Although if you're broke, that's not a bad place to start, right? Get on with the cure. But put this in your notes, 30 minutes a day. Just devote 30 minutes a day to reading. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes a day, read something positive, something challenging, something inspirational, something instructional. Get at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next clue. Every day, don't miss once you set this up. Just don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes, because you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some books. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone, or just food says the next most important thing to food is words. Words nourish the mind, make us different than animals and dogs. Words nourish the soul. So, humans have to have food and words in order to be happy and healthy. Some people read so little they've got rickets of the mind, they're undernourished mentally. So, to get a good diet of words, I suggest good reading habits, 30 minutes a day.
Now, some people don't read because they don't read well. I understand that, and the national average is fairly poor. People have fairly poor reading skills. They're still trying to operate on awkward old skills of the past, reading one word at a time. And with such poor skills, when you read, the mind usually wanders because you can think about a lot of things. Did you ever read a page and wonder what it said? That's because the mind is just wandering around. Did you ever read yourself to sleep? D. That's another problem. The mind says, who needs this? And just shuts off. Poor skills. While a guy looks at a book 500 pages and says, no, you start and write, and I mean I never get through this one. Anyway, in our weekend seminar, we take a whole section in about two, three hours, and we go through reading skills. How to read a book a day is the title of that subject. And I'll tell you what, if you can read a book a day, it'll change your whole life. I mean, a book a day will change your whole life. Expose yourself to a whole variety of things, spiritual, moral, personal, economic, history, geography, everything. I mean, you can really change if you read a book a day. So, you might want to attend the weekend, get in on those reading class skills. It's incredible. A book a day will change your life. But hey, whether you read slow or fast, or whether you read awkwardly or whether you read well, here's the key. Read. Don't miss. Here's what reading is. Reading is tapping the treasure of ideas. That's what reading is, tapping the treasure of ideas. And ideas can change any part of your life. And if you've got a good excuse not to tap the treasure of ideas at least 30 minutes a day, or spend the money and get the books, I'd love to hear it. Some people have excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, I've got this gold mine. I've got so much gold I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig. John says, I ain't got a shovel. I say, well, John, get you one. He says, you know what they want for shovels. Let me give you the two books that started my library at age 25. My library now is worth many, many, many thousands of dollars. But it started with two books Mr. Schaff recommended these to me, got me started. Schaff said, become self-educated. He said, standard education will get you standard results, and you can check those numbers and see if that's what you want. But if you want to go beyond that, you've got to become self-educated. So, he got me started in my library. He said one of the ways is to build your library. Now, I had a Bible, right? That was 66 books, so that's a pretty good deal. But here's what else he recommended. He said, number one, get the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, if you don't already have it, the title should intrigue you. Think and Grow Rich, I found that book in a second-hand bookstore. I paid 47 cents for it. I still got it. One of the rare hardback covers. I read it several dozen times. Schaff taught me, repetition is the mother of skill. Some of the ideas in that book helped change my life. As I look back on it now, the book was worth several hundred thousand dollars, and I bought it for 47 cents. What a lesson I learned, the difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Schaff, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met Mr. Schaff, I asked, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost, and everything changed. But that was book one, Think and Grow Rich. The second book he recommended I get was the book on nutrition. Schaff said, study nutrition. I think that first book was by Del Davis, Eat Right to Keep Fit. I think I've got lots of them now, but I think that was the first one. Schaff said, study nutrition, and there's all kinds of books on nutrition. Just read them all. Some are a little weird, but read them all. If you're weird, do the weird stuff. I mean, whatever, but read them. Then make up your own mind. Remember, don't read and become a follower, read and become a student. Make up your mind. Find a plan that works good for you, but get the books on nutrition. Here's what Mr. Shaw said to me. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Vitality, he said, some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent, it's that they don't have the zing and the fire and the vitality to do well. So, he put it right on me about studying nutrition. He said, Jim, you wouldn't believe it. He said, I got this friend of mine who raises racehorses. The guy's got nine books on how to feed horses. He does not have a book on how to feed himself. 
He said, my friend studies horse nutrition, studies vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, protein, amino acids, carbohydrates, fats, enzymes, proper balance for his horses. He's a fanatic. And he said, you ought to see his horses. They're magnificent, beautiful, powerful animals. They can run like the wind. And he said, you ought to see him. He's a wreck. He said, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. Did you ever believe that? In my later studies, I discovered some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. If you can believe that. Anyway, I didn't mean to give you a health lecture here tonight, okay? But hey, take care of yourself. Work on that part, because it's one of the answers to doing well. There's even a Bible phrase that says, many times the spirit is willing but the body is weak. Now see, you're in trouble. And that is the problem. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get him. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. So, you've got to work on both sides of this, right? Okay, but get your library started, get the books. Put it together. Books are the trademark of civilization. It's fascinating to walk into someone's home and browse through their library, because your library says something about you. So, put your reading together. Very important. Here's the second way to find out how to change your life. Listen. Get around successful people and listen. Now, you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called what not to do. And you've got to learn what not to do as well as what to do to learn from the negatives as well as the positive. Find out what poor people read and don't read it. Right, that's good information. Learn from the negative. But now, you can also learn from the positive. Sit around successful people. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening during those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough, from surprising sources come great ideas. In sales training, we teach. If you want to learn sales, listen to the kids. Kids have got to be the master salespeople of all time. They have no equal. Father tells his young son, no, you cannot have an ice cream cone. 30 minutes later, he's licking on one. That'd be 30 minutes worth listening to. They've got moves you wouldn't believe. Persistence runs deep like the ocean, and the kids never took a class on how to overcome objections. They already know how. They don't need classes. So, listen and learn. Now, here's some of the best advice I've got for the whole evening. It won't get any better than this. This is it. Poor people ought to take rich people out to dinner and listen. That's some of the best I've got. If a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well and offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 500 Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes 15 minutes, keep it rolling. The biggest steak in town takes 45, keep it rolling. Pour on the dessert. Stretch that meal out about two hours. If you get a successful person to eat and talk for two hours, they're able to drop ideas in your lap, change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five. But you're right. Poor people don't usually take rich people out to dinner. That's the problem. The guy said, he's rich, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not coming up with any money. And he says, besides, you work where I work. By the time you struggle home, it's late. You're lucky to get your own supper, let alone running around trying to find a rich man to feed. And the guy's behind on his house payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you've got to be better than sincere. Work hard, you end up broke. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good listener. And remember what you read and what you hear. Put the good stuff in your journal. Now, here's the third way to find out how to change your life, and that's to observe. You pick up a lot of ideas just by watching. Get around successful people and watch. Here's why success leaves clues. Watch how the man shakes hands. Watch how the lady responds. People who do well do certain things over and over and over and over. And if you're clever, you can pick them up. Watch it all. For guys making $10,000 a month, I'd watch how he walks. Maybe that's it. Copy his funny little walk. 
Somebody says, well, that's kind of a silly walk. Say, it's 10,000. I haven't got the money yet, but I've got the walk. It's being bound to start somewhere. What I ask you tonight is to be unusual and be a good observer of what's going on. You can pick up ideas that can change your life starting tomorrow. Just be a more careful observer. Now remember, there are two ways to see. One is called sight. See with your eyes. The other one is called inside. See with your mind. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. And the best advice on developing sight and insight is, pay attention. Don't miss anything. In the weekend seminar, we teach one of the greatest fatalities to success is preoccupation, lack of concentration. The guy's mind wanders, so you wind up average. You've got to learn to zero in, concentrate. I read a good article one time, Reader's Digest. The title is, Wherever You Are, Be There. Excellent. Don't miss anything. We've spent a bit too much time discussing personal development through understanding how things work, but it's crucial. I've outlined three methods to gain this understanding. Now, let's move on to the second step in personal development. Firstly, understand how things work. Secondly, take action. In global business, we refer to this as game planning. Creating a game plan is emphasized in our weekend seminars, whether it's for your office, sales, family, or social life. Having a game plan is essential. It's about putting your plans on paper rather than keeping them in your head. When asked about your plans for the next six months, don't just talk about it, show it on paper. Taking action on what you've learned is crucial. And the key word to accompany action is massive. Massive action can transform everything. Instead of making a few calls, make thousands. Instead of a few contacts, aim for thousands. Massive action is the antidote to the language of the poor where people merely try and hope for results. Instead, adopt a better game plan. Starting tomorrow, review your game plan. If it lacks massive action, amend it immediately. The formula for success is simple. Grab a good idea and take massive action. Repeat this process with multiple good ideas. Success lies in heavy action. We can edit all this, right? The formula for success is to take heavy action on a good idea. That's the ratio. Now, here's the key. Don't wait until you've learned two or three thousand things because that way, you'll use up all your time and might end up smart but broke. It's okay to be dumb and broke, but being smart and broke is pitiful. Don't let your learning lead to mere knowledge. Instead, let it lead to action. Wealth comes in many forms, not just money. Money is one of the least valuable assets. Some people with a lot of money are still poor in other aspects. Fortune and fame are illusions. They don't provide the solutions they promise. So, there are many types of wealth, but to attain a significant portion, you need a game plan based on heavy action. Now, let's discuss the third step in personal development, and then we'll conclude. Step three is exercising caution. Throughout life, we need cautions, and this one is simple. Don't try to beat the system. Understand how it works and work with it, but don't attempt to cheat it. Some people learn just enough to start cutting corners and looking for shortcuts, but that leads to a cheap life. Learn the best way to do things, even if it seems to take a little longer. Don't compromise on doing what's right. Another key point here is to be a quick learner. Don't take too long to grasp concepts. Learn quickly. And don't be stubborn. Be open to change if it's for the better. Now, let me illustrate with a story. There was a man who went to Las Vegas with little money. He didn't want to risk gambling, but the allure of the jackpot bells ringing and money flowing was too tempting. Instead of gambling with his cash, he devised a mental gambling game. He picked numbers and mentally bet amounts, jotting down wins and losses. He ended up losing his mind. The moral? Don't try to beat the system. Now, let's talk about another aspect of personal development, the physical. You must take care of yourself. Treat your body like a temple, as the saying goes. Something you take extremely good care of is your body. Treat your body like a temple is a great phrase. Not a woodshed, but a temple. Take good care of it because it's the only place you have to live. Nutrition is crucial. My mother studied nutrition and passed on her knowledge to me, as did my father, my children, and my grandchildren. Learning to take care of yourself is key. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. 
They lack vitality, which is a major part of success. So, take care of yourself. I know a guy who raises racehorses. He feeds his horses better than he feeds himself, ensuring they get everything they need. As a result, these horses are magnificent and can run like the wind. However, the guy himself struggles with basic physical activities. Some people even feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. Now, let's discuss the physical aspect of personal development. Appearance matters. You never have a second chance to make a first impression. God may look on the inside, but people often judge based on appearance. So, ensure that your outward appearance reflects what's inside. Take a few minutes each day to stay healthy and nourish your body with good food and study nutrition. Next is the spiritual part. I'm not an expert, but I believe humans are more than just advanced animals. They are a special creation. Regardless of your beliefs, if you value spirituality, study and practice it. Don't neglect your values and virtues. Lastly, let's talk about the mental aspect of personal development. It takes time to develop mentally. Learning, studying, growing, and changing are all part of human development. Some things can't be rushed, they take time. Feed your mind. Some people read so little that their minds suffer. You need to be able to understand and defend your beliefs and values. Mental readiness is essential for personal development. Right, don't be lazy in learning first. Learn how to do well, then learn how to live well. Don't be lazy in learning and practicing the art of economics. Productivity and lifestyle. Only study and practice make you cultured, and only study and practice make you happy. Study and practice make you rich. Do something different in the next 90 days than you did in the last 90 days. Whether it's picking up new books to read, adopting new health disciplines, or improving your relationships with your family. It doesn't matter how small it is. You'll start doing different things with the same circumstances. Since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves, we can change what we do. And if you change, everything will change for you. Your bank account, your income, your future, and your ability to acquire your dreams. It'll all change. Now, let's work hard on yourself. You can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said Jim Ron's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that I'm the guy who doesn't mind coming a little bit early and staying a little bit late. I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Ron's a hard worker, but why did he have pennies in his pocket, nothing in the bank, and behind on his promises? I change. I turn my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically now, there are a lot of values to become, but let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? The answer is, of course, of course. Let me give you the secret. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your journey job. Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on myself. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, the latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. It's an investment in your future. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces, all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, no problem. Money. No problem. Economics. No problem. Future. No problem. If you just go to work on the right thing. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy. Work on your attitude. Work on your personality. Work on your language. Work on the gift of communication. Work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. I can't give you better advice than that. That's not where you start. Life change does not start with inspiration. Life change starts with education. You've got to be educated to the point of start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information. Gather new knowledge. Make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. 
I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change if you will change. It'll all change if you want to change. It isn't going to change. This stuff's too easy, stuff's too simple. It's called take action. Number one, neglect no errors and discipline. Number two, start setting up some disciplines. And if you'll do that, you'll perform a miracle. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes, and I'm telling you, everything will change for you. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. That's the key to understanding economics. The marketplace is also described as reality. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we don't get paid for time. We get paid for value. So, one of the key questions is, is it possible to become twice as valuable and make twice as much money in the same time? Of course, it is. All you have to do to earn more money in the same time is to become more valuable. America is unique. It's a ladder to climb, starting at the bottom. What about $4 an hour? Somebody might say, shouldn't it be 5 Well, maybe if you're going to stay at the bottom for the rest of your life. But that's a pitiful way to live. The scenario of life is to start and become more valuable. Now, why would we pay somebody only $4 an hour? They're not very valuable to the marketplace. So, how do you get more money? You become more valuable. You can't get rich by demand. You can't wait for a raise. It's easier to climb than to wait for a raise. Why not become more valuable instead of waiting? That's the key to all good things, becoming more valuable. Five years ago, I received a telephone call from a company ready to expand internationally needing my help. It was worth millions. Why did they call me? Because I had become valuable. I was raised in obscurity, made mistakes. But at age 25, with pennies in my pocket and nothing in the bank, I change. Is it possible to become worth millions economically? Of course, it is. Let me give you the secret. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. If you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you knew me at age 25, you'd have said I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on myself. If you learn this simple principle and start the process today, your income can dynamically change. Economics is just one of the values you can start earning in terms of equity. So, start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work on your skills, work on yourself, and develop the graces necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. So, invest more in yourself to achieve more. Life success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly you can't quite catch. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. By age 31, I became a millionaire purely through economic means. It took me six years from 25 to 31. Unbelievable, right? Always remember, be a student, not a follower. Here's the key. Take your own life, be your own person. You don't have to follow anyone else's model. Be yourself, buy what you want, listen to what you want, make changes or stay the same. It's your life, not anyone else's. Success isn't about stereotypes or material possessions. It's about continuously unfolding your own life's design and making it happen. That's what success truly is. I want you to reflect on your own dreams, your own ambitions. What dreams have you given up on because someone said they were impossible? It's time to let go of those doubts. It's time to sail into the vast, limitless potential that awaits each of us. Our belief in ourselves is the compass guiding us through uncharted waters. This belief is the wind in our sails propelling us forward even through the toughest storms. It's the foundation of all great achievements. The moment you begin to believe in the possibility of achieving your dreams, that's when the magic begins, my friends. Think of belief as a seed planted in the fertile soil of your mind. It requires nurturing care and, most importantly, it needs the sunlight of positive thinking and the water of relentless action. However, belief alone isn't sufficient. What shapes this belief into something tangible and real is vision. 
Vision acts as the lighthouse guiding our ships through the fog of uncertainty and doubt. It's the mental image we create of what we aspire to become, of where we envision ourselves in the grand scheme of life. As we journey through self-belief and vision, we encounter a vast ocean filled with waves of fear and doubt. These waves try to push us back to the shore of comfort, but every achiever had to cross this ocean. Fear and doubt are not just obstacles. They are also signs that we're leaving our comfort zones. Feeling fear is natural when we tackle something significant, but it's in these moments that we must find the courage to push ahead. Here's a strategy that helped me confront your fears and act despite them. Courage isn't the absence of fear, it's acting despite being afraid. Each time you face your fears, you weaken them and gain strength, wisdom, and confidence. I faced my fair share of fears and doubts. There were times when I doubted myself, moments when doubt almost suffocated my dreams. But I learned to ask myself, what's the worst that can happen? Most times, the worst wasn't as bad as I imagined, and even when it was, I realized that not trying, not giving my dreams a chance, was a bigger risk than failing. So how do we put this into practice in our lives? Begin by acknowledging your fears, not as adversaries, but as indicators guiding you toward growth. Then take small, steady steps to confront them. It could be speaking up in a meeting, sharing your ideas with a colleague, or tackling a challenging project. With each step, you'll notice your fears weakening and your confidence growing. And when doubt creeps in, challenge it. Hold on to the belief in your vision and past successes, no matter how minor. Remember, every great achievement starts with a courageous first step. As we journey forward, let's welcome our fears and doubts as companions, not obstacles. They're here to strengthen us, to shape us into individuals capable of extraordinary feats. The courage to press on despite fear, the resilience to overcome doubt, these are the qualities that set dreamers apart from achievers. Let's be the achievers. Let's take those uncertain steps toward the future we envision because beyond fear and doubt lies a world brimming with opportunities waiting for us to seize them. In our quest for self-improvement, having conquered fear and doubt, we now navigate the waters of discipline and consistency. This phase tests our determination, our commitment to the path we've chosen. It's about doing what's necessary even when the initial enthusiasm wanes. Discipline and consistency act as the engines propelling our journey forward, especially when enthusiasm wanes. Consider discipline not as a burden, but as a liberator. It's the discipline to rise early, to pursue your dreams, to resist distractions, and to persevere when results feel distant. Consistently doing what's right, even when it's hard, is the key. This consistent effort is the magic that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. So how do you cultivate this discipline and consistency? Start small. Establish routines that support your goals. If you're writing a book, commit to a page a day. If you're training for a marathon, begin with a mile. It's not the scale of the action, but the regularity that matters. Over time, these small steps accumulate, akin to compound interest, yielding significant results. Additionally, track your progress. Keep a journal, make checklists, whatever works for you. Observing your advancement, no matter how slight, fuels motivation and serves as a reminder that you're moving forward. And remember, discipline is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. There will be days when you stumble, and that's normal. What's crucial is getting back on track, not allowing a setback to derail your progress. Just picture for a moment a world where everyone practices perfect self-discipline. Imagine people fulfilling every promise they made. Envision the achievements, the transformations. Now, I know what you're thinking. That world sounds ideal, maybe too good to be true. But here's the secret. That world begins with you. It starts the moment you decide to take control of your life. Self-discipline is about taking responsibility. It's about making choices, not excuses. It's about saying no to things that harm us and yes to things that help us grow. It's committing to yourself and keeping that commitment. It's easy to be disciplined when someone is watching, but true self-discipline is what you do when no one is looking. It's the choices you make in those quiet, unseen moments that truly define who you are. The rewards of self-discipline go beyond just getting things done. It's about the peace of mind of being in control of your actions. 
It's the pride of looking back at your day and realizing you did what you set out to do. It's the confidence that grows every time you keep a promise to yourself. This confidence is priceless and radiates into every aspect of your life, brightening you like the morning sun. However, self-discipline is also a challenge. It's a muscle that needs constant exercise. And just like any muscle, it can tire, it can feel strained. But that's a sign it's growing stronger. Each time you push through the temptation to give up, you're not just moving closer to your goal, you're also building your self-discipline muscle. You're teaching yourself that you can do hard things, that you can overcome challenges. And that in itself is a victory. Think about the last time you really pushed yourself, when you went beyond your comfort zone. How did you feel afterward? Exhausted, perhaps, but also exhilarated, right? That feeling, that's the power of self-discipline. Self-discipline also means being able to delay gratification. It's about seeing the bigger picture, understanding that the pain of discipline now is nothing compared to the pain of regret later. It's about choosing long-term satisfaction over short-term comfort. Mastering self-discipline doesn't mean you'll never fail or falter. We're all human, after all. It's about how you respond to those failures. Every setback, every obstacle is an opportunity to practice self-discipline, to get back up, dust yourself off, and move forward with even more determination. With self-discipline, there's nothing we can't achieve, no dream too big, no goal too distant. It's your strength and your guide. Embrace it, nurture it, and watch as it transforms your life in ways you never imagined. Life reserves its treasures for those who earn it, not those who merely need it. Enlightened self-interest involves giving so that you may receive, seeking so that you may find, ensuring that everyone benefits. Enlightened self-interest requires education. It acknowledges that life is more than just the passage of time. It recognizes that life is a collection of experiences encompassing highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to take action. You must possess the discipline to act. What's crucial about discipline is that one discipline affects another. They all intertwine. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and think this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others, but everything counts. If you choose to sleep in instead of going for a walk, it'll soon matter. If you'd rather spend money than save it, it'll soon matter. If you delay writing to an old friend instead of staying in touch regularly, it'll soon matter. If you choose to work late every night instead of spending time with your family, it'll soon matter. Every choice has consequences, and they all add up. If you skip the walk, you're likely to neglect eating right, skip buying helpful books, and miss out on seminars. And over time, it all adds up. So the key is to start picking up good disciplines. It does matter. Every little bit counts. Every new discipline impacts the rest. Every small action makes a difference. That's why taking action is so important. Even the smallest action, the one you think won't matter, does matter. Take it because when you start seeing results, you'll be inspired to do more. For example, if you start walking around the block, it might inspire you to eat better. Eating better might inspire you to read a book, and so on. Disciplines affect each other. Lack of discipline affects your entire life. The key is to reduce this sense of lack. One of the biggest temptations is to slack off a little, to do less than we're capable of. But that affects our mindset, beliefs, and family life. No, you can't afford to slack off. Save that for vacations. When you're at work, focus on work. When you're on vacation, fully relax. If you mix the two, you'll end up ruining both. Stay disciplined, be fully engaged, do whatever it takes to complete tasks, restore your health, improve your finances, sort out your family life. Stay disciplined. Practicing discipline every day establishes habits that give structure to your life, and remarkable things can happen. They can multiply. Anyone can drastically improve their income. I was broke at 25 and a millionaire at 31. Everything around me remained the same. The change was within me. I refined my mindset, read books, attended classes, and started seeing life differently. It works, you know. There's one quality that I've dedicated my life to embracing, and it's the key to being unstoppable. I'm not sure if I've fully mastered it yet, but I'm committed to improving every day. 
Being unstoppable means deciding that no matter what challenges come your way, you'll keep going. Even when things get tough, you won't give in. It's about choosing to persevere even when you feel tired or worn out. And let me tell you, there's nothing quite like knowing that nothing can stop you. It's the foundation of self-belief, a sign of your strength and determination. So adopt this mindset and watch as you overcome every obstacle with unwavering determination.